Hey guys, it's Ricer Boy, and today we are going to compare my 2002 Nissan Sentra to this 2018 Nissan Sentra to see which one is truly better. Now let's go over the features of both of these vehicles to see what each vehicle has to offer. To start off with the exterior of these vehicles, the 2018 Nissan Sentra has a completely new fascia, which not only puts it in line with Nissan's recent design language with its V-motion grille and sharp angular headlights, it truly is as forward in design as the Sentra has ever been. Now meanwhile, the 2002 Nissan Sentra has an admittedly more aged design, with the very round rump and a poorly designed rear bumper that needs to be clipped in half the time when it falls out. The new Sentra has a host of standard features such as automatic emergency braking, a 5-inch color touchscreen display, Bluetooth phone connectivity, and keyless entry. There's also optional features such as dual zone climate control and adaptive cruise control. Meanwhile, the old Sentra deals with having a lot of storage cubbies, along with a top one up here which has been modified by the owner, um, along with such luxuries as air conditioning and uh, power windows. Now while the new Sentra retains a beam rear axle, as you can see, the rear seat room of this vehicle is actually quite large for a vehicle of its class. Also, reviews say that the ride quality is much superior than to that of its competitors. The old Sentra is like a sardine can in comparison, and also has a more firm ride quality since at the time it was considered to be a sporting vehicle. Now going to engines, the new Sentra has a 1.8 liter 4 cylinder that makes 130 horsepower and 125 pound feet of torque. This engine with the attached Xtronic CBT transmission is able to achieve 29 miles per gallon of fuel efficiency in the city and 37 on the highway. The old Sentra makes use of a 2.5 liter 4 cylinder that puts out 175 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. And now while this is superior to the newer Sentra, this thing puts that power through a six speed manual and a helical limited slip differential. This also gives it fuel economy of 22 miles per gallon city and 28 miles per gallon highway. Next, we move on to the subject of vehicle safety wherein this new Sentra has a standard backup camera and automatic high beams. There's also a driver attention monitor, along with optional blind spot assist and rear cross traffic alert. The NHTSA also rates this vehicle at four out of five stars overall in crash testing. The IIHS also gives it good and superior in all crash test related categories for testing this vehicle for safety. Now, while this old Sentra definitely has some sporty looks, it actually has two out of five stars for its side crash test rating. The IIHS also only gave this vehicle acceptable and poor ratings for its crash test score when it was tested back in 2004. In fact, when it comes to the safety issues with this design, driver dummies actually had their knee impact the key in the ignition switch of this vehicle. This impact was so hard that it ended up bending the key of the vehicle. This meant that if you were in that seat, you'd break your knee just in a collision. Well guys, as an overview, it would seem to me that the new Nissan Sentra has more features, is more practical, is more efficient, and is just a better vehicle objectively than the older Sentra. So the real question is, why would you even consider buying this car when this one seems to be better in every single measurable category by car reviewing standards? So from that clip that you guys just saw, clearly there were some numbers that I forgot to tell you about. You might have noticed that the older Sentra actually had over 50 more horsepower than the new Sentra. Another thing that's important to keep in mind is that the old Sentra only weighs 2,700 pounds while the new Sentra can weigh up to 3,000 pounds. That power to weight ratio difference means that the old Sentra can actually go from 0 to 60 in about 7 seconds flat while it takes the new Sentra nearly 10 seconds to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour. It all goes to the purposes of what each of those cars was built for. The trim level of the 2002 Sentra was the SER Spec V model, which Nissan deliberately made in limited numbers because they knew it was only for an audience that wanted a performance compact vehicle. In contrast, the new 2018 Sentra that we looked at is just a normal trim. It's what you'd expect to get if you were a small family or just someone going through college that wanted a car for general transportation. 
It wasn't really built for performance purposes, so even though you might be more comfortable in there and have so many different convenience features, it of course isn't designed to be sporty. And of course, if I wanted to go into it, we could talk about all the other problems that Nissan has been having as of late with making decent cars for people to drive. But one way or another, it really comes to show you that you can't just buy the newest thing that's out there. Nowadays, you have to buy a car that meets the criteria of what you want it to do. And if you just want to drive comfortably to work every day, then maybe the 2018 Nissan Sentra is for you. But if you want to have some fun, then a 2002 Nissan Sentra SER Spec V might be your choice. So it isn't just 16 years of time that can make a huge difference between one car and another. Quite surprisingly, the old Sentra has four-wheel disc brakes while the newer one has rear drums. Both of them still lack an independent rear suspension. It's amazing how much things can stay the same, yet also change through the passage of time, especially in the world of cars. So I'll leave it up to you guys which Sentra you'd prefer. But until next time, thanks for watching, and peace out.